Well, welcome. It's time again for our storyboard and I want to continue to teach you about Jesus. And so let's make the storyboard look a little bit more exciting, shall we? Uh, let's put some, let's put a cloud in the sky. Um, it's a nice summer's day, we'll say. There were birds in the trees and, and flying across the sky. Let's put some of them over here. Um, there's another one. You might know what kind of birds these are. They're different types. Here's a blackbird or a raven. Uh, it's springtime, summertime. The flowers are coming out and everything is looking really, really lovely. Let's put them here like this. And uh, today's story really is about Jesus as the teacher and, and the master teacher. Let's put him here. Because this is Jesus's very first lesson. And um, the Bible tells us, Matthew actually tells us this. A man called Matthew in his gospel, in his good news about Jesus. He says that Jesus went up onto a high mountain. Jesus loved to go up onto the mountains. And I think this is a lovely green mountain. And the people all followed him. Let's put lots of people over here. And these are the kind of clothes that they would have worn at the time of Jesus, different to the clothes maybe that you're wearing today. And so let's put lots of people here, crowds and crowds of people. You see, they, they've been listening to Jesus. They've been watching the amazing things that he was doing, that he was making sick people well. And his teaching was so amazing that no one ever fell asleep when Jesus was teaching. So do you know what? There were men and there were women there were boys and there were girls, there were rich people and there were poor people and there were sick people and there were healthy people and there were people with, with important jobs and there were other people that maybe thought that their jobs weren't so important. There were good people and there were bad people. Let's put some children over here. But you know what? Jesus came. Because he loved everybody. And um, lots of them came to listen to Jesus. We're going to put many of them over here. Jesus hasn't yet picked his 12 close friends. He's called Peter and Andrew. This is Peter here. And this is Andrew here. And, and here's John here. And this is James, his brother here. And Jesus has met them around the lake where they were fishermen. And he said to them, come and follow me. And so they were like his disciples. They were following him. But he hadn't yet appointed them and picked them to be part of the 12. But they were probably here listening to Jesus. And I tell you someone else who was definitely here. And um, here he is. His name is Matthew. And Matthew was somebody... <laughs> who worked for the Romans. He was a tax collector. Can you all say tax collector? Tax collector. People don't like tax collectors. Today, it's the inland revenue. And uh, this is these are the people in the government, of course, that take the money out of our salaries and wages and we pay it to the government. Well, he worked for the enemy of the Jews. He worked for the Romans and he used to take money from the people. He would trick them. He would take too much. He was a cheat. He was a thief and he wasn't very popular. But you know what? I believe that he was here in the crowd when Jesus taught his first lesson. And it was quite a long lesson, probably took quite a long time. But when Jesus taught, the people were amazed at his teaching. They loved Jesus' teaching. They were so interested because he spoke God's words. It was God speaking to the people. Now I want you to think, can you think of your best ever teacher? You might be a child listening to this and you might have a favourite teacher at school. Or you might be a grown up and you might be thinking, yeah, I remember Mr. Smith or, or Miss whoever. And they were really good teachers. And I wonder what made them the best teacher of all. Jesus was the master teacher. And he showed everyone how much God loved them. 
and a good teacher will show you how much they care, how much they love you, how much they want you to learn. And so here's Jesus. Matthew was there listening. He wasn't one of Jesus' disciples yet, but he was listening. How do I know that? Because it would be Matthew that would write all this down many years later that he would hear about Jesus. Now, what did Jesus say to the people when he was listening to them? Well, he said lots. And if you have a Bible, you could turn to it. It's in Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. 5, 6 and 7. And Jesus is teaching. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. Or the Sermon on the Mountain. Can you say Sermon on the Mount? Brilliant. Sermon on the Mount. Jesus went to a high place. And sometimes when we go to a high place and we look down, things look really different, don't they? Really small. But we can see so much more. And when the people on that mountain, they began to understand what God says and how he sees things, which is so different from the way that we see them. Let me say one or two things that Jesus taught the people. He said things that are totally different to what we would do. He said this, he said, blessed are you or happy are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Jesus said, rejoice and be glad. Be happy when people say nasty things about you because you believe in me. Well, Jesus said, for the same way there were people before called the prophets, they too were laughed at and mocked and persecuted as well. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Think about what salt does. Do you put it on your chips? I do. I like salt and vinegar. It makes them taste nice. We put salt in food, don't we? And salt is used to flavour. Jesus said to the people, you are to be the salt of the earth. You are to be the light of the world. Don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl or under your bed. Put it on its stand so it brings light to the whole world. And you know what? We are as Christians to be like the light leading people and shining brightly like Jesus did as well. Well, do you know, everyone knows that it's wrong to murder, don't they? We know that it says in the Bible, do not murder, do not take somebody else's wife. But you know what? When Jesus started to teach, he made these commands even more. Let me pick something up, drop something here. He made them even more harder to do. Jesus said, you've heard that it was said, do not murder. But I say to you, do not be angry with your brother. Wow. He said, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. That means take somebody else's husband or wife away when they're married. But I say to you, do not look at another person. Maybe a man looking at a woman or a woman looking at a man in a bad way that you want to steal them and take them for yourself when it's not right. You know, Jesus said these things. It's amazing. And uh, he said lots of things. He said, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Yes, love your enemies because God loves even those that don't love him. He then looked at all the people and he saw that they looked worried and stressed and sad, perhaps, and harassed and helpless. And he pointed up to the sky and he said, look at the birds. Look at the birds. Look at the birds, he said. Do not worry. Now we say that, don't we? Do not worry. But when Jesus says, do not worry, it's because God says, I will look after you. He says, do not worry. Look at the birds flying about. They don't go to Sainsbury's. They don't go to Asda. They don't have to store up in fridges and cupboards. But your heavenly father feeds the birds. How much more special are you? And why do you worry about what you dress? I keep knocking on the floor. Why do you worry about what you dress like? Why do you worry about stuff? About what you look like? He said, look at the flowers. And they looked at the flowers. There were probably lots of flowers. Look at the flowers. They were beautiful. 
And God said, you know what? There was a man, his name was Solomon. He was probably the best dressed person in the whole wide world. You know what? He says, but these flowers that God gives their beautiful colours are clothed better than him. He said, why do you worry about what you will look like, what you will dress in? God gives the flowers their amazing colours and clothes. <laughs> do you not think that if you trust him, he will provide for you what you need? And Jesus taught the people that we should call God our Father in heaven. And he taught them, he taught them a prayer that gets prayed in churches lots of times. It's called the Lord's Prayer. And it goes a bit like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And Jesus taught the people, not necessarily a prayer, but what God is like and how to pray. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Well, Jesus came down from the mountain after teaching the people. I don't think anybody fell asleep. He came down the mountain. Let's have him down here. And as he came down the mountain, a man came towards Jesus. And I expect everybody else ran away when this man came towards him because this man has something wrong with his skin. And in those days, people thought that people that had something wrong with their skin, leprosy it was called, was catching and so you kept away from these people. In fact, they couldn't live at home. They had to live on their own. Often they would live out uh, amongst, you know, in the woods or in the caves and away from all the people. Because people were frightened that they would catch what these people had. And this man comes to Jesus. I expect everybody else run away. And he knelt down before Jesus. And he had leprosy all over his skin. It's a beautiful story in the Bible. And he says to Jesus, he says, he says, Master, if you're willing, you can make me clean. You see, he felt so dirty because of his skin disease. Jesus looked at the man and he touched him. I love the fact that he touched him. He touched the man. He didn't need to touch him because Jesus could have healed him without touching him. He touched him. I don't think anybody had touched him for a long time. But Jesus wanted to show that he loved him. So he touched him and he said, I'm willing. Go and be clean. And the man was immediately healed. Isn't that exciting? His leprosy left him. And Jesus made him well. Well, somebody else came to Jesus. Let's put this man over here. Can you see he's a soldier? He's a Roman soldier. Can you say Roman soldier? But he was in charge of lots of other soldiers. He was a centurion. Yes. And he had servants. But he heard about Jesus. And at home, he had a servant that was sick. And so he came to Jesus because he heard that Jesus was making sick people well. He comes to Jesus and he says to him, Lord, he said, um, at home, I've got a sick servant. Would you be able to make him well again? Jesus said, I'll come to your home. And you know what the soldier said? He said, no, Lord. He said, you're far too important to come to my house. But I know that if you say the word, even here, if you say the word, my servant will be well again. Jesus looked at him and he said, wow. Well, I don't think he quite said well, but he might have done. Wow. I am amazed at your faith, how much you believe. And he said to the man, go, go home and you will find that your servant is well again. He went home. The servant was well. Isn't that amazing? Well, later on, not sure it was that day or the day after, Jesus would meet Matthew and he would call Matthew to leave his work as a tax collector and follow Jesus. Matthew, whose name is also Levi, he left his work as a tax collector and he followed Jesus. Well, that's the end of today's story. I'm going to tell you more next time. God bless. See you soon.